What's up everyone, welcome to the channel. Today I've got a disgusting Iron Man build video for you. This man is a unit of mass missile destruction. This is a heavily rocket focused build and the damage is pretty ridiculous. I'm gonna show you the skills I'm using, the gear I'm using, why I'm using them, and then we're gonna get into some gameplay to just show you how much destruction you can bestow upon these baby robot bad boys. First thing you're gonna notice is this drip drip. This skin is absolutely amazing. It's called the uh, Verity skin, or Verity skin. Honestly, I don't know how to pronounce it, but I do know that it looks pretty nasty. I would preview it for y'all to get a better look, but I don't want my skin to get locked. You know there's bugs for days in this game, so we're just going, you're just going to have to view it from here. Alright, let's get into the skills. We're going to start out with the specialty skills. For the Arc Overload Specializations, first we're using the Arc Field, which is a nice little force field that's going to protect those projectiles from tagging you. Because in this game, you don't have to worry about people coming up throwing hands at you. That's easy to deal with. What catches people slipping is when you got 11 robots shooting lasers at you from off the screen. Bam, bam, boom. Next thing you know, you're dead. This is going to prevent that from happening. All right, the second specialization we're using, defensive field, which is basically an upgrade from the arc field. So when people shoot those lasers and those rockets at you, they're going to bounce off and they're going to go back and possibly hit them and do a little bit more damage. So that's nice. All right, for the Unibeam specializations, a lot of people really like to rock with Omega Beam because it's super strong. But the downfall, it's really short. And the thing I like about Unibeam is you're invulnerable when you're using it. So I like to use the regular old Unibeam with a precision refactor. This gives you three more seconds of Unibeam action. And a lot of times I'm using Unibeam is almost like a fail safe. If I get caught in a sticky situation, if I get overwhelmed or I'm almost dead, I'll pop Unibeam. That way I can blast a couple bros or I can lay down one of the heavy HP opponents like Adaptoids or those big old Hulkbuster looking robots. And it gives you a few seconds to kind of strategize, process what's going on and think about what you're going to do after the Unibeam is over so you prevent death because nobody wants to die. And then we're also using Concentrated Fire which gives you a damage increase for staying on the same opponent. I like to use Unibeam a lot on those heavy HP opponents like those big rock throwing Adaptoids or the fire adapt toys. All right, as far as for Hulkbuster, now I'm gonna be honest, we don't really use Hulkbuster that much for the damage because the rockets do more damage than Hulkbuster with the way we have our build, but I use Hulkbuster as like a fail safe. Like if I'm almost dead, if there's too much going on, I'm like, oh, I'm about to die. Let me pop Hulkbuster, boom, you stay alive. As far as the specializations, we're using the Magno Missile Barrage, which lets you target up to eight enemies at once. And then we're also using Hyper Coils, which gives you five more seconds of Hulkbuster action. Because if you're in the Hulkbuster, if you had to use it, you might as well abuse it. And you know, you got five more seconds of action to punch people, shoot people, to impose your will. Now for the mastery skill tree. For the melee upgrade, we're gonna be using the combo finish mastery. Increase the damage of all combo finishers by 25%. I'm gonna be honest, with this build, we're not throwing a lot of hands. Most of our offense is coming from rockets. Only time that we're gonna be throwing punches, for the most part, is when we're out of intrinsic energy. So this is just the perk that works best for that because whenever we do run out of intrinsic energy, I like to go up to them, throw that light, light, light combo that punches them up in the air, slams them back down, and this is just nice that it's gonna get you an additional 25% damage. For the takedown upgrade, we're using the Heroic Takedown Mastery. This is gonna give you an Heroic Orb anytime you get a takedown, which is nice because it's gonna get you back to using your Unibeam or your Arc Overload or Hulkbuster a little bit faster. As far as the range attack mastery, depending on your build, if you've got a higher crit chance build, you could rock with the critical expertise, which gives you an additional 15% critical damage when using range attacks, but my crit chance is pretty low on this build. We're kind of based on overall range damage. We went with the perk range combat mastery, which increases all range attack damage by 15%. And as far as the range mastery trees, we went with all the rocket skills. Rocket mastery increased the rocket damage by 12%. Rocket specialization turns your rockets into homing missiles, which is absolutely disgusting. And then rocket efficiency decreases the intrinsic energy cost for rocket attacks by 10%. So you can throw a couple more rockets before you got to get up and start punching people. So as far as the intrinsic abilities, we're using the Arc Reactor Kinetic Atomizer, which increases intrinsic energy gain from dealing damage with light attacks by 16% per hit. So like I said, we're really only using melee attacks whenever we're out of intrinsic energy so we can build that meter back up. This is going to give us 16% more intrinsic energy per light attack, which is just going to get us back to using the rockets, which is the mainstay of our offense. So this is just perfect. 
And then we have Perfect Evade Intrinsic Boost. Instantly generates 15 points of intrinsic energy when performing a Perfect Evade, which is really nice because a lot of the higher level enemies, all their attacks are unblockable. So whenever somebody's attacking you and it's a red indicator versus the blue or the yellow, that's an unblockable, which means you can't parry it, but you can dodge it. So with this skill, you dodge it, boom, extra 15 points of intrinsic energy. That's more rockets right there, baby. And then we're using the overcharge damage boost, which increases the damage for all attacks while overcharged by 12.5%. So when you're overcharged, you're just putting out more DPS. Then we're using overcharge damage boost, which is going to increase the damage for all attacks while overcharged by 12.5%. Basically, I'm just trying to get my DPS with my rockets up as high as possible, and this is going to help us. As far as the defense advancement, we're using reactive generator, which is going to grant 15 intrinsic energy points when parrying an enemy attack. So what that basically means, if you parry or do a perfect dodge, you're going to get 15 intrinsic energy points, which is just going to help keep your intrinsic energy up so you can just fire off more rockets and put out more damage. And then we're using tactical barrier. Heroes near the energy barrier gain a 15% crit chance increase on all attacks. I don't use the energy barrier as much as I should. And then we're using air superiority, which increases the damage of range attacks while flying by 15%. This is great because you don't have to be moving in the air. You can just be chilling hovering and you're still getting that 15% damage increase for the gear. All right, we're using the Sacred Northern Stone of Lethal Will as our major artifact. Increase that crit chance, that tears offense damage boost is nice. It's just going to increase that DPS, which the overall goal is just to get that DPS with the rockets as high as possible. This is going to help us get there. The minor artifacts, we're using two blue ISO 8 shards, which just triple stacks, increases the precision. All right, for the melee gear, we're using lightweight invulnerability gauntlets. All right, with the lightweight invulnerability, you get an 8.4% chance that the light combo finishers grant an invulnerability buff, which I know that percentage isn't very high, but every once in a while, you're going to get that nice little buff for a few seconds because anytime I am doing melee combat, it's just going to be my light combos. It's almost always going to be the same one where I pop them up in the air and then slam them back down. Boom. Also, plasma accelerators. Light signature attacks apply plasma damage, dispersing plasma energy on every impact. So when we pop them up in the air with that uppercut, Boom, plasma damage, here we go. And then we have Dauntless Impulse, 11.3% increased stun damage from sprint and evade attacks, which is a nice little damage buff whenever we do get forced into those melee situations. For the range gear, we use an Adept Protection Repulsor. So these got some pretty nice perks on them. Adept Protection, 75.4% chance hitting an enemy with a range critical attack grants a defense buff. Now my crit chance is not very high with this build, which is a little bit unfortunate. I'm looking for a couple pieces that's going to increase crit chance, but also not take away from how much damage we do. But this is a really nice perk that when you do hit that crit chance, you're going to get a nice defense buff. And then Gamma Warhead is incredible. This really packs on the damage. Missile attacks deal Gamma damage, incorporating Dr. Banner's redacted research on Gamma Bombs. Expert Spark, 55.8% chance defeating an enemy with a ranged critical attack grants an heroic charge burst for all heroics. Like I said, my crit chance is rather low in this build. I usually get this probably once out of every 20 enemies killed, which doesn't happen often, but it's nice when it does happen because it's just going to get you back to using those heroic abilities even faster. The titles on these gear pieces are nice. We have Reactive Graviton Explosion. We get a 12.8% chance taking damage triggers an anti-gravity field that causes nearby enemies to float in the air. Now 12.8%, that's not a very high percentage. It doesn't happen very often, but when it does happen, it's nice because if you got a whole bunch of enemies attacking you and you get this little explosion, boom, you don't have to worry about taking damage, and then you got some easy pickings with these little robot losers just floating in the air. We also have Fortunate Invulnerability. 55.8% chance reviving a teammate grants an invulnerability buff. This really incentivizes being a team player. When you see somebody down, all you got to do is stand in the circle for like five seconds and then boom, they're up and you got a good chance you get this invulnerability buff for a few seconds. And we also get proximity armor. You get armor when in proximity to other teammates. I don't know the specifics of how much armor you have. This is nice to get a little defense buff while you're around your teammates. So you're just going to be taking less damage. Then we have the Dauntless Blessing Reactor. Dauntless Blessing is an 11% increased critical attack chance for sprint or evade attacks. Which is nice because when we're sparingly forced into that melee interaction, I'm almost always going to get there by a sprint attack. So that helps that we get a little bit of that crit chance. Critical Spark, 19.5% chance takedowns grant an heroic charge burst for all heroes. So the fact that, alright, then Critical Spark, 19.5% chance takedowns grant an heroic charge burst for all heroics. This is nice because not only every takedown you're getting a heroic orb, 
you're also getting almost a 20% chance to get an additional low heroic charge, which is delicious. Then we have Rampage Spark. Defeat three enemies in rapid succession to grant an heroic charge burst. This is nice because with how much damage the rockets do, almost all small enemies are one shots, which means you got three enemies around you, boom, 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 heroic charge burst, here we go. That's the build, it's nasty, but don't just take my word for it. Let's take this unit of mass missile destruction into some gameplay real quick just to show you what we're rocking with. So we're gonna do the weekly little priority harm challenge just to showcase this build and show you how nasty these rockets can be. Let's do it. Wipe the baby turrets out, they're trash. I'll do some damage. Dang, see? Look at that. Even the regular the regular rockets are putting out 26k. Boom. Oh, the little shield drones. They're shooting at nothing. Oh my goodness. See, we're, we're getting that little, we're getting that heroic charge buff. It's about it's probably one out of every 20 enemies. I don't even need these teammates. Y'all can get out of here, team. Okay. So we're taking out the riot bots in two shots. Big boy damage. Who wants to? Ah, I want to hit the riot bot. Okay. So it looks like three shots on the riot bots if nothing's critical. But still, just look at the numbers. I'm going to float above you, Hulk, because I don't respect you. Oh, the adaptoids. You know what? I completely forgot to pop tears uh, to your defense. Pop that real quick. Uh oh, we got suppressed. Did we get that bonus damage whenever we're in the air? This guy's you thought you could jump. Up. Dang, he done fell apart. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that's gonna do it for this one. That's the Iron Man build, the Rocket Man, as I like to call him. But I hope you all enjoyed the video or found it helpful. If you did, smack that like button. Subscribe to the channel if you're new. And until next time, stay safe, stay awesome. I'm out of here. Peace. It's yum! Yo, 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 yo. Non perfecta es. Incontinent. <coughs> <coughs> Move, 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 move